All right, folks, welcome back. Uh, this afternoon, many of us uh, were shocked and saddened to hear about the death of James Ingram, uh, the R&B legend uh, who was 66 years old. Henry, go to my iPad. This was a tweet that was sent out at 2.23 p.m. Eastern by Debbie Allen uh, that said, I have lost my dearest friend and creative partner, James Ingram, to the Celestial Choir. He will always be cherished, loved, and remembered for his genius, his love of family, and his humanity. I am blessed to have been so close. We will forever speak his name. Uh, and then once this was posted, folks began to, of course, comment on it. Uh, and then, of course, we saw the story uh, initially uh, that was no cause of death given. And then later, uh, we saw the story uh, that said that James Ingram uh, passed away as a result of brain cancer. Now, uh, many folks, of course, have been, uh, tributes, tri tributes have been pouring in uh, for the le legendary singer. Quincy Jones, we called Quincy, uh, and Quincy wasn't doing any particular interviews, uh, but Quincy did release this statement. He said, quote, there are no words to convey how much my heart aches with the news of the passing of my baby brother, James Ingram. With that soulful, whiskey-sounding voice, James Ingram was simply magical. From the minute I first heard his voice on the demo tape for Just Once to 100 Ways, his classic duet with Patty Austin, How Do You Keep the Music Playing, Secret Garden, We Are the World, and all of our recordings, every beautiful note that James sang pierced your essence and comfortably made itself at home. But it was really no surprise because James was a beautiful human being with a heart the size of the moon. James Ingram was and always will be beyond compare. Rest in peace, baby brother. You will be in my heart forever. Again, that was uh, the great Quincy Jones uh, who released uh, that particular statement. He also paid tribute uh, to James Ingram uh, on uh, his Twitter page as well, uh, posting uh, a video uh, where James Ingram actually uh, performed um, at a tribute uh, for uh, Quincy Jones. Uh, and so, Henry, go to my uh, go to my iPad. This is Quincy Jones introducing James All Ingram. All the love you got left, I want you to give it up right now for the singer, James Ingram! Your favorite song. Cute. Listen. James Ingram. The activism. All right, folks, joining us on the phone right now is the incomparable Jeffrey Osborne. Uh, Jeffrey, how you doing, brother? I'm great, Roland. How you doing, man? man. A little saddened, you know, from the news. Uh, absolutely. I definitely I saw your Twitter post earlier, uh, and uh, you said it was interesting because people always got you and James Ingram confused. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, was that uh, rather funny, actually. Me and James did a lot of work together. Uh, going way back to, wow, you know, the 80s, we did some shows in Vegas together for a while. And uh, it's funny, we'd be standing together and people would come up and still get us mixed up. People would come up to me and say they love my song just once. And they'd come up to James and say, I love I love your song, On the Wings of Love. And we'd stand there looking at each other, laughing. And James would always play it off. James would always just go with it. He said, yeah, James, I love you on the wings of love. He said, yeah, that was, uh, yeah, was a good song, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so we had so much fun, man. Uh, I loved him, and I'm dearly going to miss him. Wow. Well, one of the things that uh, is also interesting, so, and this actually happened, Jeffrey. So I'm at Essence Music Festival. I'm in a restaurant in New Orleans. And a woman sitting at the table next to me, um, and she introduces herself, and she tells me she's James Ingram's daughter. And she said, oh, my God, my dad really enjoys your work. Uh, and I said, well, I appreciate that. And then what's, what's so funny is I said, but I need you to tell me, how is it that your dad never, ever got the woman? I said, I swear, I listen to more of your dad's music. I said, and I always got sad because he never, ever seemed to get the woman in the end. <laughs> so, so the next year, the, the next year was 2007. Uh, the history makers had a tribute to Quincy Jones. And James Ingram was one of the folks who paid tribute along with Eddie Levert and others. 
And I went up to James. I said, dog, I said, you never got the woman, man. He cracked up laughing so loud. <laughs> um, and again, and his, his music was just amazing. Uh, but but that was always the deal. It was just sort of just just his style and what you know his, his outpouring and and so how he affected folks uh, with those ballads. Right, exactly. Well, he had that voice, man. That voice <laughs> just was amazing, man. It was you know a real earthy sound in his voice that uh, just connected with everyone. Uh, you know, I, I at one point. Uh, James and I did a duet album, which never got released. It's a shame that it never got released, but it got mixed up in a record company kind of a duel. And, uh, you know, we spent on, we, like I said, we spent a lot of time together, James and I. He was over, over my house. I was over his house. We wrote some stuff together for the duet album. And sadly enough, it, it never came out. But uh, he was an incredible guy. He was a crazy guy, man. He was so full of fun, man. We had, I tell you, he uh it was amazing, uh, and I'm just I'm blessed to have spent the time that I did with James because we did a lot of shows together, uh, and uh, it was just he's just a beautiful person and a spirit and an incredible vocalist. And one of the things that um, when we talk about you know cats like him and and just like you, the problem is the music game has changed, and uh, folks always talk about that really on popular radio. There really is no place for mature, or I say grown ass singers. Uh, <laughs> and, you know, and, and, but you still have this huge fan base that appreciates a great ballad uh, that James Ingram, you know, 100 Ways, or of course the duets that he would do with Patty Austin. Oh, amazing, yeah, the duets were amazing. How do you keep the music playing? I mean, just in incredible songs. I mean, just once. I mean, I, even I don't have a heart. I mean, he's, he just had incredible songs. And, uh, yeah, I mean, you you know, you can't replace that kind of music in, in the history of music. I mean, your music has changed today. But there are people that will go down in history for their uh, th their accomplishments and their contributions, uh, what they've made to music. And believe me, I mean, even though the music has changed today, so many people still appreciate someone who can deliver a ballad, someone who is always touching your soul. Uh, that means a lot. That really means a lot. And, and I also think that, you know, the young people that are making music today, I mean, they've, they've listened. They've listened and, and uh, they've studied and, uh, you know, they respect it 100%. It's just a different thing. Music is just in a different state right now. All right, then, Jeffrey Osborne, man. I certainly appreciate it. Always good chatting with you. Oh, my always, Roland, man. And thank you for doing this tribute to James because he definitely deserves it, without a doubt. Absolutely. He's the one legendary brother, man. Love him to death. Absolutely, Jeffrey. I appreciate it. Thanks a lot. All right, folks, we're, right. we're going to go to another legend. Let's go to Regina Bell, who's on the phone. Uh, Regina, uh, welcome to Roland Martin Unfiltered. Hey, Roland. Good to talk to you. I uh, hate to talk to you under these circumstances, but to just share your thoughts with our audience about James Ingram. Wow. Well, I mean, what do you say? A legend, an icon, um, one of the most memorable voices uh, that we've had. <laughs> in a while, um, especially through the 80s and the 90s, um, w w is gone. What can I say? Um, the last time um, that I saw James was 2014. I was doing the um, Soul Train Cruise. And <laughs> I remember I was going to my room, and I hadn't seen him with his hair, with his head shaved. And so I didn't know who he was. I didn't place who he was right away. And he went off on me <laughs> like I know you're not trying to not know who I am <laughs> I was like James and he's like yeah he's like girl don't play with me he started coming towards me like, <laughs> like he was gonna shake me but I mean he was that kind of brother he was he wasn't just a great artist he was just a great person and always had great words of wisdom I remember me and my brother would have issues in fact I met him through my brother Bernard Bell um, who who um, had an opportunity to work with him. And when I couldn't get see eye to eye with my brother on certain things concerning music, I called James, and James would get him straight. So, you know, I mean, I just, it, 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 a friend, um, 
somebody who just gave us some of the greatest love songs ever, um, he's going to be missed. I, I, don't, I, I don't know what else we can say. Things that, um, I mean, his voice obviously was was distinct. And, and when you think about, again, James Ingram, you don't think of fast songs. I mean, you really think about these really slow, emotional, uh, heart-wrenching songs uh, that touch you at your core. Right, right. Unless you know that he wrote, co-wrote songs like PYT, which is one of my absolute favorites <laughs> by Michael Jackson. So, you know, I mean, he had the ability to do it all. Um, that, that's what we know him for. But when I tell you his legacy extends way beyond just a love song, of course, that is some of his greatest hits. But when I tell you he could do anything, he was amazing. He was an amazing musician, not just a singer, but an amazing musician. Um, when, we th when we think about um, James uh, Ingram, um, you knew the battle that he was enduring. Many of us did not know uh, that he was, yeah. uh, he was battling uh, brain cancer. Uh, last mm -hmm. time you saw him? The last time I saw him was 2014. I saw him um, on a Soul Train cruise. Mm. But I, you know, I would talk to different people um, who we both know, um, and and they would kind of <coughs> give me an update or keep me posted on how on how he was doing and you know what his state was at the time. And you know, I was just really sad to hear because having had um, a brain tumor myself, and so I, I, you know, and I'm thankful to God that it wasn't malignant. Um, but you know any turn of the cards, it could have been a different story for me, a different outcome. And so, um, you know, I, my family, my, my heart goes out to the family, to Debbie and, and, and all of his children and his family. Just, it's just so much, you know, um, you know, just to have to, to know that he's fighting this fight. But now I'm thankful to God that he doesn't have to fight anymore. He doesn't have to go through any of that anymore, no more the suffering, no more of the pain, no more of the, you know, all of what, all of what entails that comes with that. He doesn't have to deal with that anymore. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, Regina Bell, we certainly appreciate it. Uh, thank you so uh, very much for joining us. Thank you, Roland. And thank you for, you know, because it's going to take us to keep, you know, our, uh, our great icons, our, our musical legends, it's going to take us to keep them alive. I, I think we kill them twice when we don't remember them. So I, I, I'm so grateful that you're doing this, and, and I'm sure a lot of other um, people will jump on the bandwagon. So thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Uh, thank you so very much. All right, folks, uh, uh, earlier today, I also called Lionel Richie. He's actually filming as we speak American Idol in Hawaii. Uh, wanted to join us, but certainly wanted to express his condolences uh, for uh, to uh, James Ingram uh, as well. Uh, in addition, I called Eric Benet, uh, one of our, of course, uh, newer singers, uh, of course, offering his, um, his uh, balance, if you will. And uh, he is flying as we speak and also wanted uh, to express uh, his thoughts and perspective uh, on uh, James Ingram. Uh, we're on Instagram right now, and there's so many different posts here uh, of different people, of course, expressing uh, the love and appreciation uh, for uh, James Ingram. Uh, here, you can go to my iPad. I'm just showing you some of the stuff that we have here uh, again. And so you look at some of the, uh, some of the responses, uh, all kind of different people uh, posting their photos, as you saw the duet there uh, with uh, Patty, uh, with there with Patty Austin. Uh, and then uh, we're trying to get uh, Johnny Gill uh, on the phone as well. And so, but right now, while we're trying to get them on the phone, uh, here is uh, the tribute from, 19, from 2007. Gwen Eiffel uh, was interviewing Quincy Jones uh, for the History Makers. That, of course, it aired on PBS. Uh, I was there at that particular event. It was an amazing, amazing night. Uh, and here is uh, James Ingram paying a tribute to his longtime friend, uh, the great Quincy Jones. This song started my career with Quincy Jones. I did my best, but I guess my best wasn't good enough. Cause here we are back where we were before. Seems to always 
All right, folks, I'm going to close our show out with this here. Uh, this is a statement from the Recording Academy regarding the death of James Ingram. Quote, two-time Grammy winner James Ingram was a soulful, chart-topping singer and songwriter, a 14-time Grammy nominee. Ingram earned two Grammy Awards in the 1980s, Best R&B Vocal Performance, Male for 100 Ways, and Best R&B Performance by a duo or group with vocals for You Mo Be There, a duet with Michael McDonald. As a songwriter, he collected several hits with an impressive roster of artists, including Ray Charles, Michael Jackson, and the Pointer Sisters, among others. Ingram's rich voice and masterful songwriting has made a lasting impact on the music industry. Our thoughts go out to his loved ones during this difficult time. Neil Portnow, the president and CEO of the Recording Academy. All right, folks, uh, that is it for Roll Martin Unfiltered. Uh, we are going to uh, tomorrow. I have more uh, tributes uh, to James Ingram. There are a number uh, of entertainers uh, who have been actually been texting me as we've been uh, on the air. Some folks are traveling uh, in meetings, things along those lines, uh, like Gerald Albright, like Eddie Levert, uh, as Johnny Gill. And so what we will do is uh, we will also do a second tribute to James Ingram tomorrow. And, and some of you may ask, um, why is that important? Well, again, there's a reason why uh, this show matters, because uh, I can tell you uh, for mainstream America, you know, sure, when Aretha Franklin passed away, there were these massive tributes to the Queen of Soul. Uh, but for artists like James Ingram, uh, frankly, for mainstream audiences, R&B legends, you don't necessarily get the same sort of treatment. And as uh, Regina Bell said, we must be willing to honor our legends. Uh, we must be willing uh, to share their stories, and that's why uh, we do this. And so uh, we, we did that, of course, previously with my News One Now show when, uh, when you had Ruby D passed away, when so many others passed away. And so it's important for us uh, to reach out uh, to these artists to get their thoughts and perspectives, uh, whether it's Gladys Knight and others, and that's one of the things that we're doing. And so... Um, my show is called Roller Martin Unfiltered. I can make that call, and that's why we're doing it. And so tomorrow, we'll continue our uh, tributes uh, to the great R&B legend, James Ingram. We thank all of you for watching. Uh, be sure to have a great night. You want to check out Roller Martin Unfiltered? YouTube.com forward slash Roland S. Martin. And subscribe to our YouTube channel. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real. It's Roller Martin Unfiltered. See that name right there? Roller Martin Unfiltered. 
like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. That's youtube.com forward slash Roland S. Martin. And don't forget to turn on your notifications so when we go live, you'll know it.